but otherwise, well, never mind. We might actually have some trouble here, because with the steel typing, it's open for that high horsepower, and then with that grass terra type, it's going to be open to the glacial land. So. I don't know if Grass Terra is going to benefit it here. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. We are seeing the Ting Lu and the Jondozo open up against the Landris and the Calyrex Ice. Landris is an interesting Pokemon here. You don't see Landris super commonly, but I think it's not a bad choice. It's got the Earth Power, the Sludge Bomb, Substitute and Protect. It can hide away behind the Substitute, deal a ton of damage, and brings and just start knocking things down a little bit. And now it may not be weak to anything on the field right now, but that Calyrex is being threatened by the Dondazo here. The Fissure could take it out in one clean hit, potentially. Yeah. Fissure is such a risky move. It's if you a gamble. Click it, you got a 30% chance to just instantly remove something from the field. I don't think we'll see it this turn. I wouldn't be shocked though if we see a really power, if we see the Yawn come out. Yawn is a great move to force something out. Give it a turn to make a decision on if it wants to stay in or switch out. Start playing those mind games a little bit. Exactly. So we're going to see Lewis go in for a standard play here. Defensive play from Diego going for the protect turn one on the Ting Lu. Landry is using substitute, getting set up here. Now he's going to be that much harder to take down. The Yawn comes out, like you said, correct read there. But this Calyrex is going to get one move in. Yeah, we'll hit that big Glacial Lance. Probably won't do a ton of damage to Dondozo here, as it was probably looking to mainly hit that Ting Lu, but we'll see how much it does. Not much at all. Not much, Barely no. just brings it out from the graphic. That's all we're going to see there. But the leftovers put it right back where it was. Yeah, so I Calyrex probably going to have to force out and switch here. Does not want to be put to sleep. We have Incineroar, Incineroar and the Rillaboom in the back. Incineroar, a great Pokemon to bring out here. A yeah, great Pokemon to bring out here. You can try and you know lo lower some of these stats here that are threatening you so much. But this Calyrex going to be going to sleep next turn. So you have to think and you have to think quick. Yep, you go for the Calyrex switch out. What are you going to throw out? The Rillaboom set up that grassy terrain. Yeah, I think Rillaboom puts a ton of pressure on both Cali on both Ting Lu and Dondozo here. So we'll have to see if either of them switch out. Here's the Earth Power. going to be doing a ton of damage with the Sheer Force and the Life Orb. I guess Dondozo almost down to half. It will probably take go back up to about 60% after both of the leftovers and the grass terrain here. But now Rillaboom trapped in the sand tomb. Oh, another yawn. This Dondozo just making everybody sleepy here. Yeah, so Rillaboom either now has to U-turn to get out of this or will be stuck in here and just forced to go to sleep. Yeah, great plays by Diego, playing the slow game, but getting the setups he needs. Yeah, I think this is interesting. We're seeing both Ting Lu and Dondozo. It can't, it can't switch out because of sand tomb. That is true. I think that's interesting here is both King Lu and uh, Dondozo are both Pokemon that were very big offensive threats, and now they're both playing these support roles in this new regulation. So it's interesting to see how Pokemon change over time. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting indeed. But let's see what this Landorus does against this Dondozo. Sure, you have that substitute up, but it won't protect you for so long. It's beautiful protect. We're seeing the protect from King Lu. The, the double, double protect. protect, really forcing Rillaboom to not be able to do anything, to take those turns and go to sleep, get a little bit of rest in. He's going to throw out a U-turn here, but it's going to get protected out. It's not going to have anything happen. Oh, what? What happened there? Oh, it what? Wait, it does get the U-turn. Wow. wow. That is a play I did not consider. You turning into your own Pokemon to guarantee the switch out because it's in substitute. That's brilliant. Brilliant play by Lewis. Well, really considering all his options there. Yeah, I didn't even think about that as an option. That is an incredible play by Lewis. Actually, probably predicting the double protect. I'm sure him and Diego have faced off quite a few times. So knowing the air opponent is such a crucial part of playing Pokemon. Yeah, an absolutely crucial part of playing Pokemon. Now, that just goes to show the caliber of these two players. Diego forcing him to do these insane plays. And the fact that Lewis is able to find these plays is absolutely massive indeed. Calyrex using the protect. You know, he protected against every, anything that comes this way this turn. Earth Power going to be doing consistent damage on this Dondozo. Getting it down to oh, yellow. Oh, and the crit. And the crit as well. Ruination, though, coming through. Going to get blocked out, though. Yeah, Ruination is a really scary move. 
very scary it brings you down to half hp for those who don't know what it does and the substitute goes down from lander is now going to be exposed for the next turn grassy train going to heal up that donzo just a little bit along with the leftovers it has very good survivability here yeah i'm shocked by the actual survivability potential of this donzo here the fact that no pokemon has gone down yet we are seeing a much slower game than we have in previous rounds yeah, this one has slowed down Diego, really dragging this one out, not to be like, he needs to. That's what his whole game plan is around with this Donzo, trying to put things to sleep with Yawn, and maybe even go for a sneaky Fissure play if need be. And now, with everything lined up here, Lewis playing through this slow game absolutely perfectly. Not taking him very much damage at all. He's doing those swaps when he needs to. Here we are going to see a Terra here, maybe a defensive Terra. Seeing a Terra. Terra Bug. Terra Bug. Interesting. Terra Bug is not something you see super common. But I think with the lack of powerful fire types on most Calyrex teams, it's not a horrible Terra. There's the Earth Power into the Ting Lu. Ting Lu taking about 40% of damage. He gets the Runation off. Brings it down to half. There's the, the wave, wave crash. crash. That's the wave crash. Pick up the knockout. It, it does on the lander as Landris goes down. A beautiful knockout from Diego. Now he's put himself in a very good position. This Calyrex awaiting to be knocked out within another turn or two. There's the Glacial Lance as well. Super effective on both. Taking them both down. Ting Lu now 1 HP and Dondazo. He's taken down. That is a chilling nay. Yeah, that puts Calyrex in a really powerful position. And as much as it was hit by Ruination, it will be healed back up now by that Grassy Terrain. That Grassy Terrain going up once again. We're seeing a lot of things being covered here. Incineroar, Rillaboom, both very good options. Incineroar being committed out of the two. Let's see what Diego picks here. Golden Go. That's going to be a rough matchup against this Incineroar. Yeah, Golden Go is a really powerful Pokemon. It is fast. It is resistant to all of the sort of status effects that Incineroar likes to put up. So we'll have to see if Incineroar stays in and just tries to slug it out with this Golden Go. Or if it'll, if you make the defensive switch here. Yeah, this Golden Go has Terra Water, but it can't because of the Terra Bug on the Dondazo. Trying to keep it around just that little bit longer. So it really didn't get much use out of it. And now, Glacial Lance being hovered, it could take out this Tinglu while still doing good damage to this Golden Go. Yeah, we're also seeing, actually this time, we're seeing the Terra Grass on the Calyrex Ice Ride instead of that Terra Water. There's a ton of different Terra types that people are throwing around with this Terra Grass more here to defend against those ground type moves. Those ground, those fighting type moves. Try and block those out. There's the Shadow Ball into the Protect. Gets blocked out though by Calyrex. The knockoff, knockoff. comes through. It's going to do a lot of damage onto Golden Go. And the choice specs are knocked off as well. Ruination comes through, but instead of dodges it. Wow. I forgot that that Ruination had a chance to miss. I mean, it was a move so strong you would hope it would. Exactly. It just stays that balanced in that little way. Now, looking at the rest of this board here. It looks like Lewis wants the swap and Incineroar got the knockoff. He wants to maybe prepare for next. It's Calyrex still wants to get these two kills if possible. You want to try and guarantee the double chilling yeah, and then it's just easy pickings from then on. Then on. Rillaboom being covered for a swap in. And the yeah. knockoff being covered once again as well. Ruination has a 10%, has a 90% chance to hit, so there's that 10% chance to miss there. So really powerful. And speaking of Ruin, we're seeing the Sword of Ruin come into play here. The double swap out with the Calyrex happening here on both sides. Real Boom coming out once again, putting up that grassy terrain and keeping everybody nice and healthy. Yeah, the Chiyu here, or the Chen Pao here actually does have Ice Spinner. So be able to sort of maneuver around that. There's a Steel Beam. That's a move we do not see very often as Golden Go knocks itself out by using Steel Beam. 
Yeah, knockoff goes through. It's gonna hit this Chen Pao, getting rid of that Sash. Yeah, that's not an item that Chen Pao wants to lose, as it would love to keep it for later in the game, survive a hit, and stay in it. But that Steel Beam is not a move you see very commonly. So Diego's pulling out some sort of different tacks here that people maybe aren't ready for. Exactly, now Ting Lu comes back out, but Ting Lu only has a little bit left in the tank here. Just one more round. Meanwhile, it looks like Lewis still has three healthy Pokemon raring to go. And now looking at the rest of the board, Lewis is in an absolutely amazing spot to take this one. He has so much going for him. He has the Reliboom out. He has the Incineroar out. There's so much threat, so many threats. Even if he just plays this way more support-centric, he'll be able to whittle down the Chenpao and Tinglu to very, very low stats. Yeah, the hard part here is that Diego did not bring Zamazenta. Zamazenta not a super important, super great matchup here. So having to leave it behind means you're going without a restricted Pokemon like the Calyrex that is so impactful and so damaging. Exactly, that Calyrex did swap out, lose one chilling nay, but it can get to uh, get one more right here before the end of the game. Ice he spinner, that ice spinner. Doing decent damage. Yeah, grass train gone, so it will not get that passive healing. And there's the knockoff into the Ting Lu. Does not pick up the knockoff though. And it's hurt by Rocky Helmet before removing Rocky Helmet. And the Ruination finally does hit. Now in center, very, very low. This is coming down to the wire here. We're seeing this Calyrex potentially getting Terra-typed here. Going to play very defensively, though. Yeah, I think the Terra Grass is an interesting choice, as it leaves you op it leaves you weak to those Ice Spinners in the future. Exactly, it leaves you very weak to the Ice Spinners, but is there some tech there with grassy terrain and being a grass type? I don't, I don't quite know why you would even want to go grass type here. Yeah, I'm not try, quite sure on the grass terrain here, move here, but maybe there's something that we're not seeing that Lewis is seeing. Just gonna go for the protect instead. Lash there's the lash out. out. It's blocked out. Yeah, the Rix has protected itself, and the will o -Wisp o -Wisp. comes through, but is that will o -Wisp doing much other than blocking out that Sandu? Oh, it's slow enough that Burn might even get a kill. Yeah, I'm not sh quite sure what the damage calcs are. I'm shocked that they would go for the will o -Wisp instead of just straight up taking out the Ting Lu, so that's, that's a little shock to me, and it still lives. That Ting Lu will die in the next turn, but Incineroar is going to take some Sand Tomb damage as a result. It'll stay in at least one more turn. It'll do something at least. And that could maybe even put Diego in an advantageous situation. You know, Sand Tomb on that Calyrex, whittle it down to nothing. There's a few other options it could even pivot to. But I wonder actually if they're going for the burn to try and leave it open for Calyrex oh. to actually pick up the double knockout with Glacial Lamp. If so, that is a great move there. Try and get a plus two Calyrex on the field. I think your s summary is correct, Eric. That should be the plan. And now he has another will o -Wisp cooking up here. There's a few other options. He could either completely nerf out this Chen Pao or go for that knockoff. You have so many good options on this Incineroar. Looks like Parting Shot is going to be the one committed. Are seeing the Terra here. Let's see it. Terra Grass, Calyrex takes to the field. The nature flows around it as it gets powered up by the flowery crown on top of its already big crown. <laughs> yes, it is the king of flowers now. The Ice Spinner comes through and Sonora not going to be doing anything this turn. Now it's just going to be Calyrex and the Ruin duo. There's kid. the Taunt. Oh. Don't think Taunt really matters as the Glacial Lance was clicked. Won't be able to get up Trick Room, but will that matter? Here's the Glacial Lance. Just picks up the knockout on the Ting Lu. Chien Pao survives for another turn. Yeah, Chien Pao gonna stay up just a little longer. Critical hit on the Ting Lu as well. And now things looking very, very dicey here. Now we're gonna switch into the Rillaboom. Let's see how this one shakes up. Boom, gonna activate that grassy surge. 
try and boost the survivability of its teammates, but it's still going to be an uphill battle for to take out this champ power. You can't use that glacial lens, you have to use the high horsepower, and that not 100% accurate. The fake out, though, going to put a lot of pressure on this champ power, unable to take out this, uh, this Calyrex this turn. Yeah, I think the protect is a great move here. You have to protect this turn and then hope that the ice spinner will knock it out next turn. If it doesn't, you're not in a great position, but you have to draw out that fake out so you don't just sit there and get knocked out. Exactly. Diego is not out of the game just yet. Lewis could potentially win this as well. This is a very, very close game. Yeah, and this is still game one here, folks. These players could be going to a game two. Even a game three is on the board. The question is now, if you're, Lu if you're Diego, you do have to be worried about that timer slightly as you are down Pokemon. So if that timer does run out, you will he will lose. Exactly, you can't stay too long on this timer. You have to try and bring it to a decisive victory. And I think actually that's what Lewis might be doing here is he actually might be waiting out the timer. Give him another win condition. I don't know if he has the time to wait though. Oh, a super Ice effective Ice Spinner lands! Because no trick room, Calyrex would be going last. It's going to come down to this last duel here. Can the Rillaboom close this one out? Grassy Terrain is gone. There's the U-turn. U-turn does. does pick up the knockout. Lewis wins your first get game. Beautiful play from Lewis and a beautiful play from both players. Diego is sticking out all the way to the end. Somehow turning that one into a very risky one after it did not go his way in the beginning. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. We are going to go into a game two here shortly. Players are going to take that moment, rethink, re-strategize. If you're Diego, what do you do differently? Exactly. What do you do differently? And what does Lewis do differently? Because I think while he did come out with a win, that was not a decisive victory at all. He had to do so many pivots here to get himself in the right position. You'd love to see that, but when you're in the when you're in the game and you're playing, you don't want to be put in that position if you can try and avoid it. So I'm wondering if there's anything Lewis would be able to do to try and avoid those scenarios. I think the ones that really gave him trouble were was that Qian Pao and it was that that Dondozo from the beginning. It just stayed up so long and put so much pressure on Lewis. Yeah, and it's been a long time actually here at St. Clair. I don't know if we've ever seen a game be decided by timer. This is the first time we're seeing that really slow methodical play. I was going to say, did he bring Zama Zenta into this? No, he did not he did bring not. Zama Zenta last time. So we'll have to see if he does that. We also didn't see, we didn't see Zama Zenta. We didn't see Raging Bolt. I don't know if either of those two Pokemon really help him here. I doubt Lewis is going to bring Pelipor or, or Urshu Rapid Strike. Yeah, I doubt that as well. Fire was not really an issue at all. You also don't want to bring the rain for that Dondazo because that rain wave crash is going to do a lot of damage and don't think you want to run the risk of that at that point. No, and the only spread move you're really worried about on a Zamazenta team is that Golden Go and it's Make It Rain. So really, you don't need Wide Guard. Probably not, no use for Pelipper in this matchup. Exactly. So Diego's team, just team comp alone, is putting a lot of pressure on Lewis. It limits his choices a little bit more. And you could run it for the Tailwind to get those speed bonuses to try and get the edge out on Diego. But... I don't know if that's going to be it. I th really think Lewis wants that Trick Room up. Yeah, both players taking that chance to really think about how do I maneuver this mode. Trick Room's hard to go up. They've got Lewis has got a lot of Pokemon that are actually slow and can take advantage of that. So I'll have to see what he does. That Trick Room goes up, and now you have a really slow Dondozo who is ready to go in and just sort of finish off things. Exactly. We didn't see Fissure. I know, like you said, Fissure's a risk, but sometimes backs up against the wall. You need to go for those risks sometimes. Yeah, Fissure's a really interesting move. It's scary to click. It's a move that you have to say, well, I've got a 30% chance to hit. This could be a 30% chance for me to really change the game here. If it hits, you're in a great position. As we get ready into game two here, Golden Go and Chen Pao actually taking the lead up front versus Urshifu and Landorus. We're seeing Urshifu this game. We did not see Urshifu last game for Diego. Yeah, that Urshifu is going to be putting so much pressure on this Golden Go because it has so many moves that could just mess it up, especially that close combat. Oh, wait, can't land because it's Ghost. Can't land, but I think what Golden Go is actually more worried about is that Landorus there and that Earth Power. That Earth Power is going to do a ton of damage to Golden Go. So you have to play around that carefully. 
play around it very carefully here. Shen Pao being targeted oh, out of the gate by this this Urshifu. It's going to try and close combat and knock it out right away. It's Swords of Ruin being used against it here. Yeah, Swords of Ruin is a really, really interesting ability. It, uh, it's a benefit, but also a negative as you power up at, or you power weaken everything else around you. The Dozo actually taking the field here, probably to counter that Landorus, as we know that Wave Crash is a one-hit knockout on Landorus. And we are seeing the Terra off the bat. The Terra off the bat on the Golden Go. Terra Water. Terra Water, that's a really good move here. Very defensive Terra type here, especially into Lewis's team. Yeah, we have to see what Lewis has in the back. If he did not bring Raging Bolt that, or Rillaboom, that Golden Go becomes a problem very quickly. The Landorus did do a protect, so this Golden Go, if it targeted it so low, it could be a very dicey Whoa, situation. Well, Lewis didn't bring the Calyrex Ice Rider. Interesting. It's like we're going back a regulation here. Yeah, I know. We're back in Reg F or something. But this is interesting. Rillaboom will take the field. The thing with Golden Go is Golden Go does not have protect, doesn't have any way to defend itself, so it will be eating this full power Grassy Surge. There's the Shadow Ball into the Rillaboom. Ooh, doing a ton of Rillaboom, doing almost just under half. And there's that grassy terrain. There it is. Now Don Dozo using that leftovers and grassy terrain to just get right in here and stay so healthy and so tanky. But Landorus has some options as well. Could go for the substitute, could go for the project. I think you still want to keep hammering away with that Earth Power. Yeah, you do know that the Golden Go is choice spec into Shadow Ball here, so you wonder if the Golden Go decides to switch out. It's not going to, it's going to stay in. We didn't see the Grassy Glide. There's the Shadow Ball again. Shadow Ball comes through. Wow, Lives almost on knocks six it HP out. and the Wood Hammer takes out the Dondozo, but Rillaboom is going to take itself out as well as Golden Go stays on the field at full HP. Now without a Rillaboom to deal that damage back to it. Exactly, Rillaboom being taken down as well. It's three on three. Beautiful plays from both players. You do have to wonder what is the counter condition to Golden Go at this point. Incineroar comes out. Yeah, the only thing is Incineroar not going to be doing a lot of damage to anybody on the field right now. Yeah, Golden Go is in a great position. I don't know what threatens it at this point. Yeah, I don't know at all either. You could go for the fake out pressure, but it's not gonna be on that Golden Go. I think he's hoping the Golden Go protects, just keep itself at 100 HP. Well, the Golden Go can't protect here. It is locked into Shadow Ball, so it's gonna be hitting Shadow Balls real hard. Oh, Probably into Landorus here. Chan Pao flinches with the fake out, and there's the Earth Power. Wow, that does so much, even without the super effective bonus. There's the Shadow Ball. Does the Shadow Ball pick up the knockout on the return? Gets it down to 18. Down to 18 there. Does not get the stat drop either, so... This Golden Go only has maybe half a turn left, another turn, because this lander is going to knock it out soon enough. Yeah, I do wonder if that was a low or a high roll there. Not 100% sure on my damage calculations. But there may have been a chance where that Golden Go does pick up the knockout and just misses it just short of the damage. Wow, yeah, that was just the decision of a few short numbers there. Urshifu being swapped out with the Landorus, even though Landorus could commit the kill on the Golden Go. I think you do have to switch out as you're worried about that Ice Spinner. We'll probably see, we're gonna see the double protect? No, we're seeing the protect as it got flinched last turn. Yeah, we're seeing the Shadow Ball be committed there on to that in center where we're not doing much damage at all. So what's interesting here to note is that Landorus would have had a turn to move as Landorus was not targeted that turn. It was not, you're right. So Landorus would have had to turn. I think Golden Goat knew it was going down anyways. Knocks off the choice specs as they fall to the ground off the cheese stick man's head. Exactly, he's not feeling so cheesy today. And this is not gonna be a cheesy fight as Zamazenta is gonna be coming out now. The shiny shield takes the stage. Dauntless shield giving the defense boost. Now, Surging Strikes is guaranteed to crit. There's no Terra on the field, so will we see the Terra bug? We 
could see the Terra bug, but if you really want to commit it just yet, you might even throw the Landorus as a panic swap here. Let's see. Looking at this board, Lewis. Well, he does have three Mons. He has the Mon advantage just ever so slightly. Not in the best spot. No, you do have to be worried about this Chen Pao on the field still. Back at full health, pretty much. So you have to figure out how do I deal with it. Taking those full turns to really think about it. going for the close combat into the Chen Pao. It can't protect. There's the close combat. It lands and picks up the knockout. Now it's just this Zamazenta left on the field. That's all that is left on the field for Diego. It's his restricted Mon, so it could do good work here. There's See, the body press. Does not get Almost the knockout. So close to picking up the knockout, but that will o is going to be a factor now. Zamazenta is on the timer. Yeah, Zamazenta on a timer, and also that's going to be nerfing that body press just a little bit. Yeah, it will. Urshifu's still up. Zamazenta does have protect, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see a protect this turn to block that Urshifu from doing even more damage as it is just Zamazenta left. Lewis in a great position here. It's in an amazing position. Terra Ghost. That could be massive. about it. They're making him immune to body press. We are going to see the Terra Ghost Bear instead. Yeah, he wants to try and get some survivability on this Urshifu. Expecting another body press. He will become immune here. There it is. Just needs to get one or two close combats off, and he should be able to close this one out. Yeah, I mean, really, Urshifu is so low. It doesn't matter if he keeps close combat. Here's the first one. Gets it down to about half. Defenses fall again, but really doesn't matter at this point when you have 21 HP. There's the body press into the Incineroar. Incineroar lives. And, and the, the knockoff. Knock doesn't really matter. I already got the boost from its item, but that burn is going to matter as now Zamazenta is within knockout territory. Yeah, I think we see the protect, so I don't disagree with the switch here. Going to try and close combat anyways. Urshifu will hit through protect. So what happens here? Here's the knockoff. Here's the close combat. Battle is canceled, and your winner for round two is Lewis. What a great round by those competitors. Beautiful round from both competitors there, but Lewis wins this one 2-0. Diego stuck through it all the way through the end, forcing both players to really go for the cerebral analytical plays, having to push their knowledge to limits, even going for some crazy plays like hitting your own substitute with U-turn to get the out. Yeah, that was an incredible play. And I think with the fact that Diego did so well on day on Saturday. A lot of the players took Saturday night and Sunday night to really tech against Zamazenta and make a few changes to beat it in the future. And maybe that's what happened there, where Lewis just changed his team a little bit enough that it had a win con for Zamazenta. Yeah, Zamazenta, I feel like, is the hard counter to that Ice Rider, but as long as you have enough support mons like we've seen, we didn't even see Ice Rider in that second game because Lewis just felt that confident that the rest of his team counters out everything else so well. And as we saw, it does. The only thing I think that gave them the most trouble was that Dondozo in the early game. That is the main tank you gotta bring down because that thing can put you to sleep. And if it puts you to sleep, you know he's gonna start going for those fissures and that is gonna be the snowball that he's aiming for. Yeah, Dondozo is such an interesting Pokemon and I know there's a few people running it, it's not super common, but playing that support role with those powerful wave crashes in the background is actually really interesting. I wouldn't be shocked if we do see Dondozo again later today. Yeah, beautiful gameplay all around. The Golden Go also was a beautiful pick from Diego. It got a lot of use in that early game, survived a lot, took out a few Mons as well, got them low, but just unable to find absolute value. I don't think it was the really end all be all right there. No. It will be interesting to see what Diego does going forward. He knows he needs to make that top cut, get to the finals to get his spot in Worlds. So he will have a lot of work to do now after losing game one. Exactly. So that's going to be round two of Swiss for today. But don't go anywhere. We're going to be going to round three very, very quickly. But we're going to throw it to a quick break. So we'll be right back with more Pokemon.